for world government, the resistance uh, complements it in some senses. So I think this is why they're trying to really jam it down now. And this TTIP is basically about, you know, it's not free market, it's mercantilism, it's it's capitalism, as some refer to it, <laughs> because it's going to drive down wages, it's going to eviscerate the middle class, as all these agreements, you know, NAFTA GATT do. We've proven that. You know, it's about the, the carrot of fake prosperity, promises that they're going to create all these jobs, when in actual fact it's about eroding what little accountability the U.S. government has left to its citizens. Yes, absolutely. And hopefully that's the one thing that we can come, that can come out of our coverage, that can come out of this if people start to look at what's being done. Why do we have this secretive meeting? Why do we have these secretive trade negotiations that are essentially affecting everything? We have people like the Electronic Freedom Foundation are getting involved in this because they said this is not simply about economic issues. It would be bad enough if it were, but it's about many things far beyond that that affects whether or not we're going to have any say-so at all in our lives. We had uh, one of the fellows there, one of the security guards, the first day. I said, you know, people are going to be deciding things for your future, and you're not going to have any say in it. And his response was, well, I hope that they decide well. He doesn't have a problem with that. Richie Allen, how do, you, how do people feel about that? Are they just think that these uh, elite uh, technocrats can make these decisions for people and they don't need to have any input whatsoever into it? No, I think things are changing. And again, this is not blowing um, our trumpets, our collective trumpets, but Infowars and um, David Icke and DavidIcke.com and The People's Voice. Um, we're making a huge change, I think, because Paul said something very interesting there. He mentioned um, the, the, we don't like the class system. We don't like the words working class, middle class. But there is a middle class. There is a class of people, David, who have always been comfortable. They've always had enough and they've never suffered. And I think... Now we're seeing, and, and, and Paul is absolutely right, we've seen the results in the European Union elections in Britain and in Ireland and around Europe and France. And I agree with Paul, he's on savoury characters in some of these parties, Golden Dawn, um, Marine Le Pen's party in France. These are awful people. But, um, but, but the middle class, people who are used to doing okay, even when times are tough, are now getting squeezed beyond belief. And when that, I always believed that when that happened, you are going to see change. People are going to stand up and say, no, no, we're not going to have this anymore. Um, well, I mean, we could be here all night long talking about the media. The media is a disgrace. I worked in the mainstream media for a long time, and all we ever did was ripped and read, uh, ripped and read, David. We ripped and read press releases. Um, we, we, did, we did interviews where we were as tame as a kitten in terms of the questions we asked um, government ministers and uh, senior politicians. An absolute disgrace. And, of course, we see in Britain, we see in Ireland, what's remaining of the media, you know, independent independent commercial radio stations, independent television stations, they're disappearing at a rate of knots. We've got companies like Global in Britain, Bauer in Britain, owning, I mean, the vast majority of commercial radio stations, um, which is why, of course, they managed to keep so much of this agenda hidden. Yeah, that's right. Now, you, you said that you were embedded in mainstream media. You broke out just to Cheryl Atkinson, who just broke this story about the experimentation on premature babies. I don't know if you've heard about that. That's breaking. I have, Paul, David, I have, and I'm horrified to hear that. Yes. I've been listening to the program um, since the start. I, I always hear the program. And uh, um, that's an absolutely horrendous, horrendous story, that. It and, really is. And yet I don't believe that that's the kind of story that she would be allowed to cover at CBS, or if she was allowed to cover it, I believe they would have probably contacted the National Institute of Health and uh, the uh, the other government agencies that were involved in setting up this horrific thing and let them do a little bit of damage control at the same time before this broke, you know. So that's the thing that we're seeing now is people breaking out, breaking free. And I think this week as we look at the one-year anniversary of the Snowden leaks, as we look at the 25-year uh, anniversary of Tiananmen Square, as we see that nobody was covering this on the outside of the Bilderberg Group. There were media representatives inside Bilderberg, but I think we see that the real place that people are going to wake up and where the rubber really re meets the road is with an information war, trying to wake people up. So that's why I go back to what we uh, started with in this segment, talking about the uh, the sleeping giant. Many people talk about, well, in Denmark, they have the same analogy. They've got a king that is asleep there until the Danish people need him. Everybody needs to wake up. Thank you for joining us, Richie Allen, with the People's Voice TV. Uh, it was a pleasure, David. Thanks for having me. Really enjoyed it. Thanks, Paul. Great stuff. Congratulations on the program. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Paul, 
We're going to be back after the break. We want to talk about, uh, there's a couple of breaking stories here in the U.S. Uh, there's one about the NRA actually coming after some of the open carry demonstrators and telling them to stop this foolishness. I want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, we've also got some stories that are breaking again about uh, China. When I was in Europe, it looked like uh, the Financial Times that I picked up on the plane, almost every article was about China. Uh, people in America just don't realize how much it has shifted. And one of the articles that I found was interesting was the fact that China is now becoming the number one supplier, uh, uh, sorry, purchaser of robots. So even though they have uh, transferred all of our jobs to China as part of Kissinger's plan, his grand opening to China, the globalists moved production out of the United States to China. Now, even that work that the Chinese had, and they're getting paid horrendously low wages, even that is going to be taken away from them as they start to replace people in China with robots in China. We're going to be right back talking to Paul Joseph Watson from the UK. Stay tuned. One in every 50 homes will have a break-in this year. Burglars call it smash and grab. Police call it robbery. We call it avoidable. We are Fake TV, a simple electronic device that can fool even professional burglars. Fake TV easily plugs into any outlet and simulates the changing colors of a television. To a burglar, it looks like someone must be home watching TV, so they'll likely move on to an easier target. At only $29.95, Fake TV costs less than a month of most alarm monitoring plans and comes with free shipping. Order your Fake TV by calling 877-5-FAKE-TV or go to faketv.com. That's 877-532-5388 or faketv.com. Fake TV, the burglar deterrent. A 30-day GMO-free emergency food supply for only $99 at 30dayfoodsupply.com. You can purchase Oregon Trail Foods' one-month supply of high-quality, nutritious, and healthy emergency meals. For less than $100, these vegetarian meals are naturally high in fiber, carbs, and protein, and they're packed with oxygen absorbers in Mylar pouches. They're completely free of any artificial flavors and colorings, have a 20-year shelf life, and take up to 70% less space than number 10 cans. They even offer a gluten free option. Oregon Trail Foods and 30dayfoodsupply.com keep prices low by buying directly from the producers in Oregon and then passing the savings to you. Purchase a 30-day 90-serving emergency food supply for only $99 this month and $10 ships your entire order. Visit the website at 30dayfoodsupply.com or call 541-229-0010. That's 30dayfoodsupply.com where they make preparedness affordable. 30dayfoodsupply.com in the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the security basketball. Alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. InfoWars building independent media operations. We've let the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime Directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. It's a popular conspiracy theory talk show called InfoWars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulted. Targeting of patriots engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at infowars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative destroy prison planet TV. You gotta set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what propaganda they put out intellectually. It's because you can feel it. We are armed! What would you do if we do all the you things we know? We have to stand up for truth. What would you turn away to? And then what if you saw all of the things that's wrong? Would you stand tall and strong? Or would you turn it off? Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight with Paul Joseph Watson from the UK. And as we're going to break, I mentioned that... Uh, when we were in Europe covering the Bilderberg meeting in Copenhagen, I was looking at some European papers. The Financial Times was all about China. 
From Tiananmen Square anniversary to an article entitled Beijing Hits Out at U.S. and Japan Alliance to the story that we had at uh, PrisonPlanet.com earlier about China dropping its oil rigs into Vietnam territory and going against the Vietnamese. But this is one that I wanted to get uh, Paul's comments on that kind of stuck out. It says China transforms from, quote, workshop of the world, I would say sweatshop of the world, to the biggest robotics buyer, they said China bought 36,000 industrial robots last year, a rise of almost 60% over 2012. They're now in first place. Uh, second place was Japan, and then third place was the U.S. They believe that at the rate that China is growing, it's going to be by far and away the largest robotics market. Paul, we've seen for a long time, we've seen the transformation again with Kissinger and others, uh, globalists. They have moved U.S. manufacturing to China. Now they're taking even that away from the Chinese. But in the U.S., we're also going to see the loss, not just of manufacturing jobs, but robotics are going to impact uh, service jobs as well. Drivers are going to be replaced by self-driving uh, trucks. We're going to see a lot of things happening in essentially service jobs in the United States. It looks to me like they are on path for a massive transformation of society by the 2020 to 2025 time frame they've been talking about for a very long time. Well, and what are the consequences? If you take away the lower paid jobs, then these people are going to be forced to become dependent on government by taking welfare. Yes. So they won't, they won't be dying on the streets. They'll still be at their level of poverty, but they'll just be in receipt of government welfare to an even greater degree, keeping them dependent. The skilled jobs, the intellectual jobs will still exist, but again, they'll be able to keep this huge underclass of people, which will be used as a voting block, completely dependent on the state, and that's what it's all about. If you go to China, though, even in like the, the drug stores, they have an employee a service helper for every individual rack of shelves in the drugstore. <laughs> Whereas in the UK and America, you know, you probably get a couple of people out there asking people if they want help. In China, the, the drugstores, in some of them, there are more employees than customers. That's the level of service employment that they currently have. Whether that will then be taken away, it's anybody's guess. But again, the overriding point is that you can you can take away those service jobs, replace them with robots, but still keep people dependent on welfare. I think that's what it's all about in terms of economic serfdom. Yes, and, and that's exactly the point. Economic serfdom. When, when you're talking about taking away people's ability to move around, and it's not just as workers. What they are doing with most of these regulations that we see that are being going, going to be pushed by these uh, partnership agreements that they're trying to negotiate in secret just like most of the regulation that we see, it's about cutting off the bottom rungs of the ladder of success. It's about making sure that nobody goes into competition with the large corporations, essentially setting up a return to serfdom, as you point out, a kind of fiefdom, you know, where, where these uh, people essentially own everything and everybody else is essentially workers. So you have a few overlords who own everything, like it's some kind of a feudal society. And everybody else is merely workers and essentially taking away that middle class that we've had since the uh, since the Renaissance. Yeah, and look, I mean, India, they've lifted themselves out of poverty by removing the regulation, helping small businesses. That's how you do it. You don't increase regulation to improve and save the economy. You reduce it. People become self-sufficient. They make their own money. They're less dependent on government. Exactly. Thank you very much. Paul Joseph Watson from the UK. Infowars.com. I'm David Knight. Join us tomorrow. listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today.